Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I wanted to show you how I made this fun little shadow box card. And we're going to be using some Lawn Fawn products today. This video will be just a little bit longer, but I did want to show you how I created this shadow box. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start off by using my Lawn Fawn Mermaid cardstock in the 100 pound weight. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that to 5 inches by 7 and a half inches. And this is a nice heavyweight cardstock to create the base for our shadow box. So now I'm going to flip that little tab over there on my We Are Memory Keepers trim and scoreboard so that it will turn into a scoreboard here. So I'm going to line that paper right up along the lip of that edge there. And I'm, my first score is going to be at one quarter of an inch. The next one will be at three quarters of an inch. And then the third one is at one and a quarter inches. So I'm flipping the paper over and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. One quarter inch, three quarters of an inch, and one and one quarter inches. So that middle section of the card will measure five by five. So that'll be the completed card size. So now I'm taking a second panel of the mermaid cardstock and I'm cutting this panel to five by five inches. And that'll fit behind that other panel. So now what I want to do is fold this. And you can see my score lines here. So my first fold is going to be away from me. And I'm going to go ahead and press that out. And then the second fold will be towards me. And this is just a simple fan fold here. And then I'm going to press that out as well. And then that third fold will be away from me again. So again, that's just a simple fan fold. And I'm scoring everything out to make sure it lays nice and flat. And you can see that there. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other side. So folding away from me, towards me, and then away from me again. So press those score lines out well. Take a little time here just to make sure they're pressed out nicely. And now you can see that's going to form the three-dimensional portion of our shadow box. And that panel there is going to be the back of the card. So now I'm going to lay this flat out, lay this out flat again. And I want to create little tabs here. So I'm just going to cut off just a little corner on each of these quarter inch panels. This will just neaten it up a little bit when I go to put the box together here. So now using my Lawn Fawn quarter inch double sided tape, I'm going to be putting tape on both of these quarter inch tabs. The next thing I want to do is take the outside in stitched apple stackables and I'm going to take that largest one and then I'm also going to grab the stem and the leaf. For the stem I'm going to be die cutting that out of the craft 100 pound weight cardstock and for the leaf I'm going to be die cutting that out of the cilantro cardstock. So I do want to position this in place here, the apple. So I want to make sure that it's centered left to right and for the top, I want to bring it down enough to have a little bit of room for that stem and for the leaf as well. So I'm going to tape everything down here with a little bit of purple tape. And then I'm going to run those through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. So now you'll see that it die cut out the apple from the center, but left this beautiful stitch border all the way around the apple. And I'm going to save that other piece for later. So there you can see how that's going to fit together. Now what I want to do is create the uh, grassy border that's going to go on behind that apple there. So I've cut two pieces of cilantro cardstock. They're five inches wide and one is an inch and a half tall and the other one is about two inches tall. And I'm going to be die cutting these out of the stitched hillside border dies. So I've gone ahead and positioned those on my cardstock taping them down with some purple tape. And then I've grabbed a piece of craft cardstock, also five inches wide and about an inch and a half tall. But you can see here, I didn't need much of it. I basically just want a little bit of that craft color down at the bottom in front of the apple. That's gonna be the little path that we're creating. 
So now that I have the grassy borders, I'm gonna take my Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide Ink and I'm just gonna brush that along the tops of the uh, grassy borders. I'm just using my Tim Holtz foam applicator to apply that ink to both of those panels. Now I'm gonna just pat some of that ink down on my glass media mat and I'm spritzing it with a little bit of water from my Distress Sprayer, which again, just has water in there. And then I'm using my fan brush and I'm just gonna spatter these two panels. And that's just gonna add a little bit of texture here. So you can see that there, but I'm gonna set those aside to dry. Now taking my Gathered Twigs Distress Oxide Ink, I'm gonna do the same thing for this little path that we're creating. So I'm applying the ink all over, then I'm just gonna pat a little bit on my glass media mat. I'm gonna pick that up with my fan brush, and I just wanna get the green ones out of the way here so that I don't spatter those as well. And then I'm just gonna add a little texture to this panel here. Okay, so I set those aside to dry, and now I'm gonna take the peacock feathers Distress Oxide, and I'm just gonna create a little bit of a sky in the background there. I just wanna give a little bit of depth to the background here. So I'm gonna go about halfway up this panel, and then that's gonna be kinda of peeking out from behind the grass there. So now you can see that those tabs are going to get attached to that five by five panel. So I didn't want it to get too bulky in that area. So I'm gonna cut off about a quarter inch from each side of those grassy borders, just so my panel will lay nice and flat when I go to assemble this. So I've gone ahead and cut that little quarter inch off each side. Now I'm gonna place the double-sided tape on the back of each of these panels and I'm not going all the way up to the top because I do want to tuck a couple of my little trees in there later. So I'm removing the backing from the tape and I'm just going to center those right on this back panel. Now for this front panel, I'm going to do the same thing with this little path. I'm just gonna apply some tape right along the bottom here. And then a little bit more up towards the top and I'm gonna go ahead and attach this as well. One thing you do wanna make sure of here is that no tape is exposed to the back side of this panel here because you don't want it to stick together when you put it in the envelope. So now I'm gonna grab the sticky note cardstock and I'm gonna take this sunshine and this is from the Spring Showers collection and I'm gonna run that through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. Now you can see that creates that beautiful little stitched uh, line on that sun. Now I'm using my Spiced Marmalade Distress Oxide and I'm just gonna add a little bit of color to the center of this sun and just to give it just a little bit more depth. And you can see that there. So now I want that to tuck up underneath behind the apple there and I just want a little bit of it to show. So I'm only gonna apply the glue tube glue just to that section that is gonna be tucked up underneath there. So now I can go ahead and attach and create this shadow box. So I'm removing the panel from that quarter inch tab and I'm gonna attach this five by five panel on one side and then I'm gonna remove the backing and attach it on the other side as well. And this is how I like to make a simple shadow box. I've been making these forever. I used to teach this at my store actually. So this goes a long way back. There are many different ways to make these shadow boxes. So feel free to create your own or you know just check and see what other versions of this you like. But this one I find is really simple and easy to do. So now that I have all of those pieces ready, I'm gonna take my gathered twigs again 
and just apply a little bit of ink around that stem. And then I'm going to go back again to the mowed lawn distress oxide and apply a little bit of ink down at the bottom part of the leaf. And then I'm going to just kind of use my fingers here just to kind of curl it up a little bit. So I'm only going to apply glue for the leaf down towards the bottom of it and let the rest of it pop up just a little bit just to give it some dimension. So now I'm going to my stamps. So this is the tree and the apple that we'll be using from the from the tree before and after set and the coordinating dies. We're going to be using that little post there, that little sign post from the Open Me stamp and die set. And then from this set, the little girl and the bicycle from the Bicycle Built for You set. And again, the coordinating dies. And the last one here is going to be the sunflower, the smaller one from the Happy Harvest set and the dies as well. So now I'm using my Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock and I'm stamping with my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp all of those images. And we need three of the sunflowers, a whole bunch of the little apples, the little girl, the bicycle, the three trees, and the signpost. Now I'm going to grab the coordinating dies and tape these down with a little bit of purple tape and then I'm going to die cut all of these pieces and I'm using my Sizzix Sidekick machine to do the die cutting. So now for the tree, I need the blender, the light green, the deep green, the dark brown, and the oatmeal. And these are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens and I'm just cleaning off my blender pen first just on a scrap piece of paper. And then I'm going to start with that lighter green, add the darker green just down towards the bottom there, and then just pull up towards the tip so it would be the lightest at the tip of the leaves. And I'm going to do that for all of my leaves. Now for the trunk of the tree, I'm going to grab that lighter brown color. I'm just going to place that all over. Then I'm going to come in with that darker brown, just sort of towards the left side of everything here, all of my branches and the tree trunk. And then I'm going to pull that over towards the right so that the right side will be the lightest. And I'm kind of picking up the pen and pulling that color over each time. And then I'm going back to that darker color and I'm just going to add a few little lines on the trunk of the tree here and then blend those out just for a little bit more definition there. And you can see that there. So now using bright yellow, pale yellow, yellow, mustard, and brown, I'm going to color in my little sunflowers. So I'm doing the center with the lighter brown and the darker brown here. And then I'm going to use that light yellow all over. And then the darker yellow. And then this one here has a little bit of an orangey tone to it. And then I'm going back to that light yellow color to do my blending. So you can blend with the markers themselves or with the blender pen. And you can also use a water brush here. It is a water-based ink, so any of those methods would work. So there you can see that up close. Now with wine red, bright yellow, deep green, and light green, I'm going to color in my apples. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm adding the red to each side, and then I'm just putting a little bit of that uh, orange color right down the middle, and then just kind of blending into that orange color. So I'm keeping it the lightest in the center and my leaves I did the exact same way that I did the tree. Now with gray brown, dark brown, and oatmeal, I'm going to color in this little signpost here. So I put, put the oatmeal color down first, then the darker brown just up towards the sign, and then I'm pulling it down. And here I'm going to pull it up towards the top. 
For the inside, I used the gray brown here and I just put it kind of in each of the corners and a little tiny bit around the edges. And I'm just going to pull that color in towards the center. So I'm going to keep the center white, basically. I just want to give it a little bit more of an antique -y look. And you can see that there. So now with black, dark brown, oatmeal, bright yellow, and yellow, I'm going to go ahead and color in this cute little bicycle. So I'm using the black here for the handles. And then I did the seat in black as well, and I just put a little black on each side and pulled towards the center. I'm doing the same thing for the little petal here. And for the tires, I'm adding just dark in some areas, sort of the top and bottom there, and then I'm just going to pull it around the sides. And I'm going to do the same thing for this other one here. Now for the basket, I'm going to use the light brown and the dark brown and just pull in towards the center. And if you get too much ink on your blender, just clean it off on your scrap paper. When it goes clear, you'll know it's clean and then you can continue blending. And here I'm using the light yellow and the darker kind of orangey yellow there. And I'm just adding some darker areas and some lighter areas and then pulling these together. Nothing fancy here, just some simple blending. And again, just a reminder, all the products I used in today's video are listed below and all the marker colors are listed there as well. Now a little bit of black on the tire there in the center. So now that's all set. Now with gray brown, dark brown, oatmeal, and wine red, I'm going to color in the little girl. And I'm starting off with the red for her dress. It's trying to keep the colors, not too, too many colors, but you could certainly color her in any color that you wanted. But I thought I would kind of keep with that red tone. You know, kind of the reds, yellow, blue tones. Uh, so, you know, like I say, the bicycle could be any color, you know, purple or pink or whatever, but I just kind of wanted to keep that color theme going. So even with her hair, I decided to do kind of that brown color, but certainly a yellow color would be pretty here. And then I'm just keeping it a little bit lightest at the bottom there. And for, with her face, I'm using sugar, almond, pink, and flesh, the flesh color. And with the flesh color, I'm just going to tuck that up under her hairline there. And then at the top of her arms and the top of her legs, and then I'm just going to pull that color down. And then with the sugared almond pink, I'm going to add a little to her cheeks and a little dot to each of her knees there. Now with this stamp set here, I'm going to use the phrase, you're the apple of my eye. And this is the caramel apple stamp and die set. And I'm using my mini tape, my glue tape from Tombow to attach this uh, little post, sign post, to my Misty stamp positioner. Now you'll see here that what I did is I'm laying out my stamps here and I did have to cut the caramel apple stamp 
uh, in half here. So I just wanted the word apple. So I went ahead and cut that. And you do want to be careful when you're cutting these. And then I'm lining these up as close together as I can get them. But after I laid these out, I just wasn't sure that they were in the center of the signpost where I wanted them. I felt like they might be touching that outer edge. So what I do, just a little trick here, is what I'll do is I take a piece of vellum paper and just lay it over my project. Then I ink it up and stamp it. And then I can see exactly where that sentiment is going to be. And there it's just too close to those lines. So what I'm going to do here is just stamp each uh, word separately. So that's a good little trick to just before you ruin something that you've spent a lot of time on, just place a piece of vellum paper in there and just double check that everything's going to work. So now you'll see that I'm just going to individually stamp these, uh, these sentiments and everything will fit perfectly here now. Okay, so now you can see that fits nicely in there. So we've got everything stamped and colored in. Now let's start assembling some of these pieces. So I wanted her little basket to be filled with some of the apples, as though she had gone uh, picking apples at the orchard. So I'm just gonna put three little apples in her basket here. And then I'm going to attach her to the bicycle. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue down there on her legs. And I want her leaning forward a little bit, holding on to the, the handles there. So I'm just going to glue that and let that sit and dry. Now I'm going to attach that to the left side of my card there. And then I want that post to be on the right side. And all my little trees are going to go in the background. Now I could have put these in earlier, but I wasn't exactly sure what the scene was going to look like. So if you're making multiples of a card, you could go ahead and do the trees while the card is unassembled. But again, I didn't know where I wanted everything to be. So I'm just going to tuck these in and it's really easy to do. So I'm just going to slide those into place here. And I'm gluing everything on the back panel flat just because I don't want my card to get too bulky on the inside. And now I'm going to glue in all my little apples. And I want a few just on the ground like they've kind of fallen to the ground there. And now I can go ahead and attach the little girl. And I don't need glue all over. I just need it on the parts that are going to be attached to the front panel here. So you do want to be careful here with the glue because, you, again, when the card is closed, you don't want it to stick together. So you only want glue on that the portions of her that are going to touch the front of the card there. And then for the signpost, same thing. I just want glue off to the right side of the signpost. And I don't want it sticking over the side so that it will fit in my envelope. So I'm just going to position that down and then my three little sunflowers. And now for the top there of the sky. I wanted to add a little bit more color up there at the top. So I'm going back to the peacock feathers. And I just slid a piece of scrap paper in there. Um, it's a little narrower than five by five so that it would slide right in there. Just because I don't want to get ink on anything anywhere that I don't want it to be at this point. So I just tuck that in there just to be safe. And I'm just adding a little color up at the top there. Now I'm grabbing my white jelly roll pen and I'm going to add some highlights to all these little pieces here.
So now that I've got that all set, I decided to put a little apple up at the top of that little signpost there. And I just added a couple more. I just thought down in the grass there it was a little too plain, so I added another one there. So now I'm going to take that little bird from the stamp set we used before, and I'm taking black, light gray, and orange, and I'm going to color this little bird in. I thought the sky was just a little too plain, so in the end here I decided to come in and add this little bird as well. So what's fun when you're building your scenes is just kind of look at them as you're going along and you can keep adding items or take things away. Um, I tend to keep adding and I have to stop myself sometimes because I get carried away with it. So I thought this little bird would just add a little bit more uh, interest up towards the top of the card here. So I'm blending that out and you can see that up close there. So I've added that to my card and I'm adding a little highlight there as well. So this is our completed card here. I'll give you a closer look. And I did want to mention that you will need a five and a half by five and a half inch size envelope to fit this card into. And that will require a little bit of extra postage. So just be aware of that. And if you are going to uh, stamp a sentiment or sign on the back, you may want to do that before you assemble the card. So just something to remember there. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.